Um, the Bearcats dropped 11 after that. Finished 17 and 12, got to the tournament, but Bob Huggins admitted when Clemson won that game, there were some gaps in the team. There were some holes. There certainly were. And this year's this year's Clemson team, though, missing that point guard, and their weakness is turning the basketball over. And Cincinnati has been forcing over 20 turnovers per game. And that's what Clemson commits. Over 20 turnovers per game. In fact, Clemson had 25 the other night and still won in overtime. They'll go to Ford inside like we talked about at the beginning. And he draws nothing but air. And Jason Maxill got a hand on that shot. Kirkland penetrates the pitch. That can be money. Instead of the rebound back out to Kareem Johnson and Cincinnati gets to reload a bit. And Cincinnati will spread out the offense. They're going to run a set real quick for Jason Maxiel. Clemson starts with a man to man. Maxiel doing some battling underneath. Thought that would happen. He's going up body to body against Hobbs right now. And the shot clock moving down to single numbers. Good fake. That was a solid move right there, but just unable to finish as Sherrod Ford, 6'9 and very long, was able to jump the second time, get a hand on it. Ooh, that was a rainbow three, three from Baba Lola. He made some big plays the other night in overtime. And a good start for Clemson on Ola's three-pointer. Baba Lola, Baba Lola. Shoots that rainbow perimeter shot at six for six. You think he'd play inside with that body, and he can shoot it from the perimeter. Outside official spots a foul on Ford, and if Ford gets into foul trouble, Clemson's going to have a long night because they've tried, as, as you mentioned, Anthony, to get the ball inside. Moments ago, that good penetration and finding that open jumper for the three, but they've got to keep Ford out of foul difficulties. Well, they certainly have. If they want to have any shot at, at defending Cincinnati down low, he's got to play because he just is a big-time intimidator in that paint. And they're keeping Ford away from Max Seal. Hobbs will body him. And J-Max starts off well. Fans celebrate 3-2. Clemson lead. And Cincinnati opening up with a little three-quarter court pressure. They know that Clemson turns it over, so they want to force him to play fast. Good deflection off the glass already. Cincinnati with a couple of deflections, and here they come back on offense. Well, Max Hill quick off his feet, gets the block, and then saves it in, so they actually get a turnover off of that situation. Coaches love when that ball stays in play. That's the idea, get the block and keep it going. Well, that's what you want to do with pressure. You want to force tempo, and you want to force teams to handle the ball with players that normally don't handle it. One thing I like about Clemson, they're young, but they'll attack, they're aggressive, they don't seem to be bothered. By playing on the road, I saw him in West Lafayette a few weeks ago against Purdue. Got down early, but still hung around. Well, they faced some stiff competition early in this season. They won't be intimidated. And these, these kids that have come in to replace the, the starters that left last year, veteran team, they're, they're going to play. Right now, they can build on a 5 2 lead. Hamilton didn't see the trailer there. Clemson able to save the ball. Sherrod Ford. So far, both teams playing tough man to man. Tough shot for Babalola, but he's feeling it tonight. That's his second three. And a great start for the visitors out of South Carolina. It is 8 2. Clemson. A big fella just stepping out on the perimeter and knocking him down. Nice high arcing shot. Dropping straight down through the net. I tell you what, it's hard to look at him and not. I think he's supposed to be inside. Mm -hmm. A good dish on the inside drive by Kirkland and Max Seal. And when we saw him against Valparaiso, he Brother made a Lola living at the free throw line. He's going back. But Baba Lola has two made threes in the first three minutes. Uh, he's stepping out and he faces his man up. And how about that? Raise up in your face. Drops it down right on top of Kirkland. Kirkland's giving up two three pointers to Baba Lola, and he's got to get out there and force him to put the ball on the floor. And you know, the Bearcats are the best right now in that oh, conference, yeah. Anthony, of defending the three already. Babalola has challenged that and hit a couple. Speaking of hitting threes, here comes the B-man, Tony Bobbitt, in the game. Well, the, the full machine is on the floor now in the BMW. Nobody's yeah. stolen that line from you, have they, in the last couple of weeks? Uh, you know, they, they may have, but uh, we won't mention any names. Yeah, Cincinnati copyrighted it, huh? <laughs> Cincinnati opening up. They get, get into their pressure off defense. 
off of the free throw. Clemson able to beat that press. Almost everybody handles the ball. The young Tigers beat the press, get the basket, and did it nicely. They got what they wanted. Got the ball to Ford about six feet from the basket, and he cashes in. The Cats haven't played in 15 days. You see any rust out there yet? Well, I think it's going to take them some time to get involved, but how about the explosive move to the basket by Nick Williams? And Jay Christie on the other end, and Clemson is coming right at the press. And as a result, has hit five of its first seven. Well, you're going to give up some points in the press, but you keep it going because pretty soon it will yield some dividends. The teams are clicking on offense right now. A 12 8 Clemson lead. Caught, caught both teams in a little hot streak. Hot shooting and good execution of offense. Clemson taking good care of the basketball. And I'm pretty sure Oliver Cornell stressed that for them to have a chance to win, they've got to keep their turnovers down. Tigers haven't been a particularly good team against Conference USA, but their start tonight is commendable. Here comes Nick Williams, handling the ball out to Bobbitt, and Bobbitt slashes right to the hoop, just a little strong. And it's back to Clemson. Had the right idea, couldn't close, though. She couldn't finish the job, but excellent drive to the basket. He knows they're going to step out on his three-point shot. And Cincinnati's getting to the lane. And you don't want to see that if you're Oliver Cornell team giving up too many dribble drives. Hamilton just a bit strong on the three, but there's Ford with a rebound. He can get a lot of offensive boards in the game. You've got to be able to block him out. But this Clemson basketball team really eats up the glass. They are out rebounding their opponents nearly nine and a half per game. So Cincinnati's got to do a better job of blocking out. Hey, you know, AB, I like the ball movement so far. Just about everybody's getting their hands on a play. Hamilton picks up the loose ball, but cannot score. And the Bearcats have a long lead to feel Williams throw it out of bounds, and we'll get a break. 14-13 for the first half. Welcome back, Oliver Purnell. And his team has jumped on Bob Huggins and the Bearcats on their three-point shooting. 12-8, favor Clemson. We're fine. We've had we've had pretty good days of practice, and, and uh, it, it gave us a, I think, a chance to, to get a little bit maybe better healed up. And, uh, and Chad got to rest his back a little bit, and, and, and with Rob's knee surgery, and, and now Rob's back. So I, I think it was good for us. You know, Anthony, 15 days is longer than most division the football teams get off, let alone basketball. Well, that, that break actually happened by accident. I mean, Cincinnati was going to play out in Las Vegas in, in one of those preseason tournaments, if you will, and because of the ruling uh, with the NCAA not allowing teams to, to go every year to those tournaments, Cincinnati had to pull out and there was that layoff. And the coach also said today, you know, it, sometimes it's good for everybody to get away for a while. And he allowed his his guys to get away from here for a good three, three and a half days and we'll see how much that pays off, just getting a breath. Baba Lola out of control, a little strong. Munson cannot save it. It is out of bounds to the University of Cincinnati. Well, that time, Tony Bobbitt forced Babaloa to put the ball on the floor and take it to the basket and create something. Bobbitt a little bit quicker and able to get out, fight around those screens, and, and not give up that jump shot so easily. Bobbitt had those five threes against Valparaiso. Today in practice, the first time he picked up the ball, he said to one of the managers, I don't like this, get me another one. And he proceeded to drain five threes in a row. So I guess shooters know, don't they? They certainly do. They shooters are quirky. As you see, the quick trigger by Bobby in the corner trying to get himself on track. And they get kicks. It's like with a little shove in the back for his first personal. So it remains a Tiger 12 8 lead. They're fresh off an offensive shootout the other night against. ETSU, Eastern Tennessee State University. They won it in overtime, 186. A lot of shot faking so far by Clemson. Always a good idea, but that one faked out. 
Robinson, and that's the second turnover off the error by Christie, Oliver Purnell. Well, the coaching staff got about 80 tickets, and I imagine most of them went his way since he's got friends and close associates at Dayton. Had an outstanding coaching career at, at Dayton, and he left that team in pretty good, pretty good position. In fact, Dayton right now undefeated. Hicks very active inside gets credit for the rebound slam that gets the crowd going a bit on the other end Lamar Rice comes right back knocks down the jumper Huggins on the sidelines not happy he'll send in another defender to try to put a halt to that that's a Flintstone right there from Lamar Rice from the hometown Flint Michigan knocking down the jump shot Max Seal tries to bank one in. That one goes awry, and a rebound taken down by Clemson. I'm impressed, though, with the Tigers so far. The Tigers, they look like they're a little bit more comfortable operating than Cincinnati, and that could just be Cincinnati working off the rush. Sure. Well, Clemson's got quite a stretch of basketball, playing five games in ten days. And they just played on Monday, so... They've got a little bit more of a rhythm, and Cincinnati's still trying to work out where they need to get shots. Williams penetrated, and a very active Eric Hicks going to the glass tonight. Eric Hicks got the Rodman look going tonight. You were teasing him about that before the game. That must have inspired him on the rebound again. Well, he's certainly working on the glass, and they've gotten this crowd back into this ball game. A rebound jam, and then the block. I think Clemson could use a break. Eric Hicks plays above the rim, and the Bearcats have cut Clemson's lead to two at 14 to 12. When play begins, Rob Whaley gets back in the lineup for Cincinnati after knee surgery. Here's the coach on 45. It depends if he gets a rebound or not. Uh, we're, we're, I, I think Angelo said four minutes at a time. Um, and so we're, you know, we just kind of see his conditioning is not near you know, where it needs to be. So he's not going to be able to have to play that long. Saw him in practice last week hobbling around a bit. Now he's more active and smiling a lot. Happy to be back with the Bearcats. And Cincinnati has rotated into a into the matchup zone defense. Want to try and limit the movement of Whaley down low and let him kind of get himself into this game slowly. To beat the clock, no. So in the last couple of minutes, the Bearcats have had an offensive rebound and jam. They've had a block, and now they forced a violation. Well, the switch up of the defense committing forces the third turnover by Clemson. Cincinnati going from a man-to-man -man into their matchup zone that has man-to-man -man principles, so it can be very confusing to a team with, with young guards. In fact, Clemson still looking for that type of leadership. That's a roll-in three for a good three-point shooter at Bill Williams, and that's the first time Cincinnati has gone ahead in the game. Cincinnati in the pressure. This is what you what they want. They want to create tempo and force Clemson to play faster than they want to. We'll be able to save that. And then an unforced error. And right now, the young Tigers who started off with some confidence out there getting a bit unnerved. Well, this crowd has gotten back into the ball game as you take a look at Phil Williams getting the real soft touch. And that's, you can tell when a guy's a good shooter because bad shooters don't get that roll. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's bouncing over the backboard. That's out of bounds. But instead, Phil Williams with the gentle cut nail touch on the rim. It's like the rims know who the good shooters are. Oh, exactly. The rotation, the way the ball just drops on the rim. So the question begs to be asked, what, what do the rims do for you? Well, I have soft touch now. <laughs> I used to lay it up there like cotton ball. <laughs> we need to ask Hugs about that later. Oh, I'm pretty sure they got plenty of film archives to show it now. <laughs> I might have been lacking in some other areas, but shooting well, wasn't one true. of them. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure the numbers reflect that. Hicks kicks it back out of the three on the way and good by Chad Moore. 
And I thought Chad, he's had some back problems trying to fight through that. You see him in practice just holding the back end of this area that's been affected. He's a gutty player. But I tell you, I talked to him earlier, then I asked him how was his back, and he said his back was fine. He really just needs to get his conditioning where it needs to be. And I tell you, whenever you're tired, whenever you're trying to get into condition, the first thing that starts to bother you is your lower back. So that could just be a product of his conditioning. And, and how about the nice inside out? Not a great inside pass, but the kick back out. And he knocks it down for three. And that's a good sign when he's making outside shots. Oh, he can really get his game cranked up because he can drive with the best of them. This adds another weapon. That's eight of this 10-2 run that's occurred over the last six minutes. Hamilton almost got the steal there, and instead it turns into a Bearcat three. Uh, a lazy pass inside, but Hicks was able to secure it and get it back out to Chad Moore, who knocks down the jump shot. He'll always look like he's in pain, but I think that's a ploy. <laughs> the young man gives you this look like he's just in agony, and the next thing you know, he's exploding by you. So you got to be careful. He's a crafty little competitor. Bengals used to have an old-time running back, Pete Johnson, was like that. Always go down, <laughs> slowly getting up. Jim Brown was like that with the Cleveland Browns. Certainly Same was. One. Certainly was. Christie tries to answer with a three. It's running out right now. Cincinnati's starting to take a bit of control. I like what the Bearcats are doing. They're attacking the basket, and the three-point shooters are doing that. Well, that's what you've got to do as a shooter. You've got to force got to force the tempo when they stop your jump shot drive to the basket but how about what's happened here in this game Cincinnati has forced Clemson to play faster but that young man right there and that's his third three of the game and this kid averages 12 he's already up to nine and he got to that quick start in this game Whaley going for an alley-oop and instead off the glass and taken by Shea Christie that was a good thought just Got to, got to see the trailing guy coming in. Clemson needs to be careful right here because they're launching threes at the drop of that. I think Oliver's making them aware of that. He said, look, a, a good look's okay, but not quickly into the offense like that. Well, he wants the ball going inside, and right now Cincinnati has forced Clemson to become a perimeter team. All their scoring is coming from the perimeter. But how about Clemson with a little full-court pressure to try and get Cincinnati out of the offensive rhythm. The Tigers started the season winning three games and the competition went up as Kirkland knocks down a three. Lots of them lost three in a row. And the other night down six. In the last minute came back to win. Moore gets the lead to break and puts it on just a third. Oh my! Check the jockstrap! <laughs> oh my goodness! How about that move by Chad Moore? The blow by! Uh, position themselves into an eight-point lead. It is worthy of another look. Well, the turnover and the hesitation explosion to the basket. But this is what happens. You, you get out of your rhythm. You might give up a few baskets, but you keep the pressure on. And next thing you know, you go out on those spurts. And Cincinnati, one of the better teams in the country, at spurting on other squads. Worst thing a visiting team can do in this type of atmosphere is to play too fast to get suckered into thinking that every three you're going to take is going to go down. Yeah, they got lulled into some false security early in the game, and Cincinnati kind of let them think that they had control of the ball game, but all the while that pressure was just building up, and now Cincinnati has gotten a couple of turnovers and baskets off the turnovers, and, and all of a sudden, that lead that Clemson had is now an eight-point deficit. There's turnovers that resulted quickly for Clemson, and the Tigers have made just two of their last eight. Hamilton tries to go by good pass to Hobbs. Good reverse. They're not having difficulty breaking the press for the most part. Well, like I said, you know, throughout the course of the game, you're going to give up a few of them, but for the most part, you're going to get what you want. We're going to get those turnovers and get easy baskets. And Cincinnati commits to the fourth turnover. And you get them to play quicker, which I suppose is what you really want, too. Right. You don't want an opposing team to come into your arena in a set tempo. And Cincinnati's doing a good job of forcing Clemson to play faster than they want to. Now the Tigers have more than one point guard. In fact, they've got three guys that can play the point. 
You're watching number three, Vernon Hamilton out there. Everybody lobbying for possession of the ball. And the officials are going to call it, I think, a hell ball. Either way, we're a second under eight minutes, so that means it's time for a timeout. It remains a Bearcat six-point advantage at 25-19. You see Clemson on Fox 19. Jim Barber, Anthony Buford. Time now for a little Toyota trivia. Part of this answer or question is very easy. The other part, I don't know how anybody can get it. The only two schools in Division I NCAA that call themselves the Bearcats. One of them plays here. Oh, yeah. More of a hint than that. Yeah, that's obvious. But I see. I only think there's one because that says Bearcats with with a C. Okay. And Sam, you see that's. Ah. What it, that, you know what? I bet you couldn't send an email because it'd make you spell check that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> spell check. Yeah. <laughs> Your point's well taken, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that you couldn't send that out. Although Bearcats. if anybody gets the answer to that, they really deserve it because that's a tough one. Moore shoots for the steal. Instead, Hamilton comes up with the ball. Clemson down by six after a very good start in this game. Cincinnati has shifted into the zone. Again, and we'll see if the execution against the zone is bet much better. That 7 nothing advantage for Cincinnati points off turnovers has been the difference. Some have been expedited by a couple of good blocks by the Cincinnati interior defense. Nice drive right there by Alu Babalola. Lola. He he caught the ball in the short corner, as they say, and he just laid it down on the ground. And explosive athlete got himself to the basket. And Cincinnati fouled him, but he's brought his A game here this evening. Three threes, and now he's gotten to the free throw line. And how about the little the little move as he prepares to shoot the ball from the foul line? Dribbles it behind his back. Looks like a breakaway for Moore, who just explodes in the basket. Yeah, does that look like a guy with a bad back? He almost, right. he could have finished that one emphatically if he wanted to. 27 for Cincinnati and 19 for Clemson. And for number one, Chad Moore, he leads the team with seven. Penetrating is Christie, draws some air. Cincinnati can get this lead up to double digits with a basket. It's tough to score against Cincinnati when you're forced into shots like that. So Christie got it. Show a little bit more patience. Whole idea of winning on the road, particularly with a young team, is take some time off the clock. Move the ball around, reverse the ball, get some guys with a touch, make everybody feel active, and don't miss those long threes that you take quickly. The result breakaways. Well, earlier in the game, you mentioned how all five guys were touching it on offense. That's not the case now. The Cincinnati has employed the pressure. They've made them run some clock to get the ball up, so now you feel like you're in a hurry, and that's why you've seen a lot of erratic play by Clemson. And Ted Valentine spots a foul on the Cincinnati end, and J Max returns to the free throw line. 20 attempts against Valparaiso two weeks ago. He hit 12 of 20. And some foul difficulties developing for somebody that does not need to be in foul trouble, and that's Mr. Ford. He's got two. We talked about how his, his presence inside is so important for this club. Is, once he's out of the game, Cincinnati's just going to take a mad assault on the basket. And the other thing about that that's interesting is take a look at Chad. It looks like he's in a bit of discomfort right now. His ribs, he told me earlier, his ribs are bothering him. I, I don't know if he took a shot in practice in the rib cage, but he's got sore ribs. So, you know, again, I, like I said, I think he's, he's going to give you that impression that he's hurting, but... When he gets in open court, he certainly doesn't look like anything's bothering him. When he gets his number called, he's back out there. A little pump fake, and after the miss, rebound taken down by Clemson. Foul spotted on Cincinnati. Tony Bobby picks up the foul, just kind of got caught out of position there. But Cincinnati forcing tough shots. Vernon Hamilton had to put up a real tough shot. Was fortunate to get, it, get the ball back, but. Uh, both teams doing a good job of playing sound defense. Not a whole lot of fouls compared to the last game we did with Cincinnati where there was several fouls. How about that play by Nick Williams? And now he's got an advantage for the layup. 
Great decision right there by Nick Williams. They played above the defender's head. Instead of throwing it back down as a uh, bounce pass, he leaves it up in the air for Tony Bobbitt to finish. I think that there was some rust on Cincinnati that rust has gone away. We'll take a look at Hamilton's eye for the moment. Take a look at the steal by Nick Williams. He creates a little give and go, give and lie. Yeah. Hamilton got poked off that steal. In fact, you'll see it right there inadvertently by Nick. And that's Cincinnati's ninth point off of six turnovers. The pressure is working, and then Cincinnati's got it going full court. They're giving it to him in half court, out of bounds circumstances. And and that's what you can do to a team that doesn't have veteran leadership at the point guard. You know, Hamilton had to defend that fast break, Anthony, with just one good eye. It's, it's tough enough with both eyes working. Cincinnati's got the motor going right now. And Nick Williams gets another easy one off the turnover. And on the other end, again, playing fast, Clemson misses a layup. Bearcats want to blow him out tonight. Somehow, Johnson almost kept that going. As you can see Cincinnati's depth right now really taking over as Cincinnati's constantly running guys in and keeping the pressure on. And Clemson just, just trying to find a way to get some type of offensive rhythm. Cincinnati already has three steals in the game. as four, six Clemson turnovers. There's a look at one of them as Nick Williams able to finish. How quickly that lead gets up for the Bearcats. It's already at 13 and it's climbing. Well, that's the one thing you've got to do when you're playing against Cincinnati. You've got to control their spurts. They can really get out, and next thing you know, the game is tied. Now you're down by 12. Cincinnati can score in bunches so quickly on a 7-0 run in the last two minutes. Another unforced error. The problem is Clemson's getting a little bit unnerved here. And Oliver Purnell, who had a team last year at Dayton that beat Cincinnati, first time he had beaten the Bob Huggins team, knows he's got youth on this team. He likes these guys to settle down a little bit if they can. Well, yeah, there was a couple of firsts last year. I mean, Clemson was 0-3 against Cincinnati lifetime, and they win last year. And Oliver Purnell was 0-5 against Cincinnati, and he wins last year at, at Dayton. So Cincinnati trying to exact a little revenge. Double action. I'd say they're getting it right now. They're up 15, and Hicks got that move. And look at the double team by both Hicks and Nick Williams. And that's going to turn the ball over to Cincinnati. And right now, Clemson's in a lot of trouble. Boy, that looks so familiar right there. I, I almost wanted to get up and hop on the floor and a double team on myself. That right there, look, look, look at Hicks. Look at the intensity, the hands. And, and Williams gets in and gets his hands on the ball, forces the jump ball, which is a turnover to Cincinnati. Got the pressure working on all cylinders. Look at the points off turnovers in this game. And in fact, Cincinnati's top five in the country for forcing mistakes at almost 23. That's a three on the way. That's good. Cincinnati 37. Clemson 19. Wow. <laughs> a double wow. This is getting ugly in a hurry. And Cincinnati just got it working on both ends. Great unselfish play right there by Tony Bobbitt as he drives in, sucks the defense in, and he kicks it out to the W in the BMW. And he knocks it down for three. It's so fun to play this game when, when your teammates pass the basketball and no one cares about who's leading. Leading scorer, leading rebounder, all those different things. Everybody's out there working hard, getting it done. And you can see this team has good chemistry. The mistakes that the Bearcats force have played a big difference in this game. They have upped the lead to 18. Look at the company they keep. Oklahoma Sooners, who had that great, great game we are talking about against Purdue the other night. 47-45 game. A lot of mistakes, but a lot of forced mistakes. So you're... You're pretty good company when you're right behind the Sooners. Well, that's the name of the game right there. You want to force teams to, to give it to you. And you want to shoot more than they do. And that's what Cincinnati is doing. They're getting lots of points off turnovers. And, and that's how you win ball games. This is a 25 to 5 Cincinnati run, and it feels like it. I mean, it has come in a short period of time. 
Seven minutes, baby. Well, the calm before the storm. We yeah. witnessed it at the beginning of the game as Cincinnati was just kind of that little sleeping giant there. And Clemson was operating very efficient on the offensive end, and all of a sudden the sleeping giant woke up and the storm began. Burnell gets to head to Greece for the 2004 Olympic Games. That on the direction of 76er coach Larry Brown. What an honor that is. Oliver has coached at four different schools, and at three of them, he has been coach of the year. And you talk to Clemson people, and they say, great guy, he's going to get it done here. But tonight, he's run into a, uh, run into a machine. Well, somehow, Clemson has got to find a way to get the ball in the middle of the court. Right now, they are going into the areas where Cincinnati wants them to go. Right down the sideline, Cincinnati employs that double team to use the sideline as a third defender and, and shut down all the other areas. They've got to look to get the ball into the middle around the half court. And what, what I would think Oliver Purnell would do is put one of his best ball handler passers in the middle, get the ball to him, and let him create three on two situations to attack this, this pressure because until they do that they're going to play on the perimeter and force themselves into bad situations. Clemson going to put together a pretty good interior game but we haven't seen much of those numbers tonight because of Ford's foul problems among other things. Unless they, they can't get into any offense. No. They, they, right now Cincinnati has forced them to play a perimeter game and it, they've taken them completely out of what they like to do. It's not strange to say this, Anthony, but the, the two made threes at the beginning of the game for the Tigers might have been the worst thing that happened. You, you're right. That, that false sense of security. This time they go inside and got the tip in by four. That was well done. And if they can attack inside, it would have this lead away a little bit. Well, they're so long down low, and Cincinnati is forcing them to play a perimeter game. If they were, if they get inside against Cincinnati, they can really attack them. There are many empty possessions right now for the Bearcats. They're shooting almost 60%. At 16 of 27 made field goals. You see that time the ball went into the middle and it seems to have settled them down. But again, Cincinnati employing the pressure and forcing turnovers. The effort of Jason Maxiel with a steal. Bobbitt is wide open. Wow, way off. Must have been some wind in the arena. That doesn't happen much. <laughs> Maybe a deer or something that ran in front of him. Oh, he misses that bad bit. That wide open. Yeah. Clemson unable to come away with any points and still trailing in this game by 18. And Clemson got it point blank, just couldn't finish. We'll come back in a moment. Cincinnati fired up about its return to the court since December 2nd. 39-21. Take a look at our four-game summary a game right now dominated by the University of Cincinnati. It is the shooting of the Bearcats that's been most impressive. And those are pretty normals for J-Max. Uh, normal numbers, seven points, three boards out. We'll start collecting some more here. Well, Cincinnati doing a good job holding their own on the glass, 14-13. And, and Clemson, an outstanding rebounding team, but turnovers are the story. Points off of turnovers, Cincinnati 16 off of the TOs and somehow got to get it get that under control. And this was a problem for Clemson the other night against a lesser opponent. 25 turnovers in a game that they nearly lost. Rob Whaley inside and uh, Mr. Whaley off the knee surgery coming back to the free throw line. As good as Cincinnati looks tonight. Let's not forget that James White will be coming to this team in a few days. The transfer out of Florida considered the best transfer in the country. And you watch him during practice, he flows that offense pretty nicely. Oh my God, he's had two years now in, in this system, or, or a year and a half, because he, he transferred last year, was able to practice with Cincinnati, and, and he knows this offense pretty well. He, he's considered a veteran player, and wow, is he explosive in the open court. He tees it up the next game, and I can't wait. Will be Saturday night in a game we'll have on Fox 19. In the meantime, Rob Whaley is back. What do you think about his play so far, partner? Well, it's going to take him some time. You know, the, the, the arthroscopic so surgery, you got to get your legs back in. As you can see, he's, he's struggling to really get any lift. Uh, but Cincinnati, they're going to go to him. He, he's got, got skills in the paint, so you got to keep him involved in the game. 
We are nearing the three minute mark. The Whaley goes for the block, instead, picks up a personal foul. And that means free throws for Sherrod Ford. This isn't how Oliver Brunel envisioned the return to the state of Ohio. At that time, Whaley got a little, was a little late rotating. He almost got posterized. You don't want, you don't want to attack. That's a roster. You know, that, that's, that is one. I know about that. I, my poster, or they may have taken it down, but, you know, when we played in the Final Four, I got put on the poster. I'm sitting there looking at, at one of their guys dunking it big time. This plastered all over Chrysler Arena. Well, so you hate that. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be on the poster. I mean, I'm telling you. Ford's got two fouls, and they're going to protect him with three minutes remaining in the first half, and Cincinnati's lead at 19 at 41-22. Against the Cubs in press, 54 Max Hill explodes. Oh, my goodness. Probably better check the basket. Good fella rolling in there with thunder. We'll be watching that one on tape over the night. Hobbs double team, and here comes the race for Chad Moore. He's by himself. And he missed it. He just wanted to get an assist. He didn't throw it hard enough yeah. off the glass. <laughs> yeah, and for Rob, he gets an offensive rebound to go with the basket. 45-22 Cincinnati. A quick three on the way by Hamilton. And a rebound to Jason Maxiel, one of the best not only conference years ever in the country. That's his fourth board of this game. Great look that time, and Whaley just not, not quite ready to hand the rolls yet. We'll pick that up the next time. A whistle called here at 2.06. Jason Maxio wears 54, and he plays as good as any big man in that conference. Cincinnati has an outstanding press breaker, and how about Whaley with the vision in the open court? Throws it cross court between two guys, and the emphatic throwdown. Anytime you bounce the ball just once and go 94 feet, you've got the break rolling. And Cincinnati works on that 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 breaking pressure because they are practicing against it. So they're working on both ends of it during the game. And their shooting has been terrific. 59%. When you heard Bob Huggins talk about this team this year, he said we're going to get after people better defensively, but it's the offense that makes Cincinnati a real player this year nationally. But Kirkland, he's just so multi-talented. He can take you off the dribble. You haven't seen really a lot of his post-up game. He's more of a, a square you up guy, and because of his ball skills, he can get whatever shot he wants. And right now, eight Bearcats have shared in the scoring wealth. Max has got nine, backed up by Hicks and Phil Williams with eight. Babalola trying to penetrate. Ford lost the ball. The Cincinnati right now trying to, once the ball gets to one side, they want to keep it on that side and force Clemson to play on one side of the floor. Tigers get the offensive rebound, but no basket, so they'll reload again. See, Clemson just, you know, they, they're moving a little quicker than they want to, and they're just mishandling the ball. They are able to get a three out of this by Shea Christie. Christie had his best game of the season against Georgia, scored 24. Nice looking jump shot right there by Christie, but again, the game is on the perimeter and their strength is inside. And they want to do a little bit of running, and why not? Led for Ford, and Ford could not save. This has been a frustrating first half for Ford, who has two fouls, five points, five rebounds, but just very few touches. He's not been able to get the ball like he would prefer. Well, this just isn't the tempo that Clemson wants to play at, although they average 77 points a game. They only got 10 field goals and 11 turnovers, so they're on pace to commit what they normally commit, over 20 turnovers a game. And they just can't right now they're they're playing way faster than they want to they shoot a very good percentage from the field that's why they average 77 points but this isn't the pace they want to play at no and in fact the opponent much different tonight as you might expect more doing battle with Hamilton and Hamilton wins that one as Chad picks up a personal foul 
Well, got a little careless with the basketball around Hamilton. And he stayed after, picked the pocket. You see the hustle by Hamilton. And no layup rule. Moore knows that he comes out of the game if he gives up a layup. That's a pretty good rule to have if you're a coach. Clemson's not a good free throw shooting team. We're seeing shades of that tonight. Phil Williams gets a nice look. I was just about to yell layup. <laughs> Most times, yes. Hamilton shot that one quickly. Cincinnati gets the ball back. Great defense right there by Babalola. He knew that Max Shield was running and that was going to be a highlight. And he got up in the air and prevented the highlight reel. That would have been one that would have showed at the beginning of the game that Cincinnati would have put it in the highlight package. Why not? Five seconds to go in the half. Bobbitt's got the ball to end the first half. He misses, but the Bearcats didn't miss much. Cincinnati 47 and clubs in 25. Holding the Barbara Anthony Buford, Cincinnati has 47 points at halftime. Last year, A.B. against Clemson, they only scored 51 for the game. They struggled last year scoring, and Edward Scott, young man right there with the ball, he put up 20 big markers in the second half and carried his team to a victory. Cincinnati had no answer for that young man. He, That right there was a sign, because that shot shouldn't have gone in. And, and then there's another one. I mean, he, he just got on the roll, and he got in that zone, which you hear players talk about. And they handed Cincinnati their only defeat that uh, Clemson has over this Bearcat team. Well, now, can you Scott now? Scott, of course, is playing in the NBA's development league. Trying to get a shot at the NBA during the regular season. How about the three, vic the, the three games, or the four games you've got this is the fifth time they've met. The first game was played 1927 28 season. I mean, that's, that's a long time ago. <laughs> and that, that the score was 42 to 16. I don't think Fox 19 televised that game in case you're wondering. <laughs> back then, Clemson played back to back to back games during the regular season. You would never see anything like that this year in modern day times. Yeah, the tournament. You know, one of those preseason terms. Well, I mean, like three games in three nights. Yeah, in one of those preseason oh, tournaments. Oh, yeah, that's right, you would. Sometimes you'll sure. see it in, in one of those, but, you know, that, that was unheard of back then. Kentucky was part of that schedule some 75 years ago or so. Cincinnati commits a turnover right there as Kirkland trying to swing the basketball. Bob Huggins wants the ball to go into the corner. He wants it to hit all five spots on the floor as they run their, their motion offense. Hamilton did a pretty nice job of looking at the press, not reacting quickly, but trying to read the defense. And still a turnover forced by the Bearcats. Babalola, he thought he was going to get the foul call. Thought the official would call the push on Jason Maxill, but I'm kind of like on the official side that time. He, you know, he's 6'6", 242. He shouldn't be falling out of bounds like that. He's got to lay the wood, which is the uh, uh, officials don't like guys doing those type of things. As Field Williams gets inside, that dribble penetration. Very strong tonight by Cincinnati. And it's coming from its three-point shooters, which is probably a bit of a surprise to Clemson. Well, Clemson's closing out hard, and, and Cincinnati's three-point shooters are recognizing that and they're driving to the basket. And the layup drill continues. Oliver Purnell had such a fine team with Dayton last year, and you're seeing signs of it this year as UD undefeated comes to the fifth third arena next Tuesday night. That game is sold out. Right now, both teams have failed to lose a game. Dayton wins Maui Classic. And Keith Walaskowski has really led that basketball. Do you he's like him? Tough, he's a, because he's a tough competitor. He competes every time he laces them up. You see the difference in Cincinnati. They get the ball in the middle, and now they attack. And they got a short jumper to finish it off. 
So that's what you want to do against pressure. You want to get that ball in the middle, and now it opens up the floor for you. Three Bearcats on the defensive end for rebounding purposes, and they'll come back again on offense. Bobbitt finds an open shooter. That's Chad Moore. Moore had that great first half. Right now, Hamilton swinging his arms around in the neighborhood of Bobbitt. Fisher says, look, I spotted it. Settle down. Bob is showing good poise right there, composure, not, not getting emotionally involved in, in Hamilton's ploy. And Hamilton, you know, he's frustrated. This whole Clemson basketball team's got to be frustrated with the way things have gone. Hamilton suffered a, some ankle problems when he's playing on tonight. He is a freshman out of Richmond, Virginia. He's a pretty good player. Here come numbers again for Cincinnati. Three versus two. Everybody gets a touch on this possession. All five guys got a feel for it, and Max Eels returning to the free throw line. And Cincinnati moving the ball after they get the turnover. Can't give it to Johnson that far away from the basket, but he alertly gets it out. They swing it around, get it to their score, and he draws a foul, walking to the foul line again. Cincinnati doing all the right things on the offensive end so far. Now Jason Maxfield looked so good from the foul line early in the season. <laughs> Last couple of games, he struggled. He didn't shoot it well at Valparaiso. And, and that one just didn't look like it rolled off the fingers of J-Max. <laughs> and he has had plenty of attempts the last couple of games. 20 against Valpo. He's got five so far tonight. His career best against Oakland. That three throw was better. Yeah, that one was nothing but net. That first one he shot into the center, into the, that corner part of the basket. Another steal by the Bearcats. They come back again. Here's Field. You know why Field missed that shot right there is because Chad Moore gave him a bad pass. If he gives him a, a good pass, he shoots it in rhythm. Instead, he leads him out front, gets him out of position. And, and that's a subtle thing that Cincinnati just create turnover after turnover. I don't think Clemson's gotten a whole lot of shots at it. Clemson has had the ball on seven different possessions, five turnovers to start the second half. Make that six turnovers in eight possessions. That's an ugly way to begin a second half when you're down big, and down right now is more. They just can't seem to figure out how to attack Cincinnati. Or put his body right in there, didn't he? You got when you're out of control, those types of things happen. You got to see the defender putting himself in position to take a charge. And you hand that one off, and then you all of a sudden change directions to prevent that type of play. Clemson right now. Young, that's that's why I think guards are the most important piece of college basketball. Because if you don't have guards. Coaches in this game, they will put that pressure on you and force you to try and execute with players that aren't used to doing that. Best teams that seem to win championships are based on senior leadership that comes in that part of the court with the guards. Got to have great guard play if you want to get, get to the Final Four and have a chance at winning it. I don't know of any team that has gotten there that didn't have stellar play from the guard position. Bob Huggins, pretty good career against Oliver Purnell when he was at Dayton, and tonight his team is up by 25. Bearcats switch away from their man-to-man -man defense. Phil Williams getting after it with Nick Williams, picks up the personal foul. Phil Williams a little too aggressive with the hands as he comes over the trap. Cincinnati trapping in certain areas on the floor out of their zone defense. Again, young guards not recognizing what Cincinnati's doing defensively. And they just can't seem to get the right plays called, the right offense run against Cincinnati right now. Look for Hobbs inside. He hasn't touched the ball very much, and he's got a nice post move. That he does. He, but see, when they can run half-court offense and get it inside, they can do well, but Cincinnati hasn't allowed them to do that. Bill Williams has that one blocked. Picked 
picked up by Shea Christie in the open court, and Christie on the run is going to get the benefit of a foul. No lack of courage on the part of number one, Chad Moore. He's been putting a body in there. Bob Huggins, he, he felt like that should have been called a charge. As you take a look at Moore, and I think he got there. Sometimes it's tough for officials to make two charge calls. Same player, same same offensive player, same defensive player in back-to-back -back possessions. Bob Huggins still had a chance to let his thoughts know that John Clarity was left a number of NCAA Final Fours. But Chad Moore, that little body in the middle of all that activity tonight. Now he's a tough competitor. Now I told him before the game, I said, you know, you got to get in the weight room. You, you get hurt a little too often. You got to get in the weight room and shore up that body so you can take the pounding. And they're going to uh, assist more right now back in the locker room. He is in some pain as he's being taken away. His rib cage is really, really sore. And that I, I'm pretty certain that that's what's bothering him. He has taken a couple of very heavy duty slams to the rib cage here in the second half. Both trying to take charges. Bob Huggins trying to get his team back in sync. Cincinnati right now they've taken a break in the intensity area committing some silly turnovers Bob Huggins is going to come with some substitutions trying to get some fresh bodies in 15 57 for the game not a great second half for Cincinnati but they're still playing a large lead 52 31 After two weeks without a game for Cincinnati, the schedule really picks up five games for the Bearcats in a matter of 14 days. That continues with Mid-Tennessee State on Saturday night. Here's Bob Huggins on the intensity in the schedule. You know, I think the older you get, the more you realize it's not bad to get away a little bit. And, and our guys were able to get away, and I think we come back a little more refreshed. And, and you know, this is a time of the year when we generally get better. And, and I think playing games helps us get better. We see more things. We prepare for more things. They, they learn uh, conceptually more things about what people try to do to them and, and what we try to do to other people. So I, I look forward to it. People around here also feel, Anthony, that this Cincinnati team is a well-kept secret because they've only played four games. One of the terms I've heard is they're, they're flying below the radar and that a lot of people haven't paid attention to it much. But they will shortly. Oh yeah, they're going to get their eye for this basketball team over the next couple of weeks. And, and I tell you, they won't be under the radar much longer. Of course, in this city, there's a, an NFL team that's captured the hearts. Great job by Marvin Lewis. You think they can win the league? Well, I think they got a good shot. They, they've got one on the road and one at home and Baltimore's got both of their games on the road so it should be very interesting Cincinnati if they finish with the same record as, as Baltimore they win the tiebreaker so a lot of excitement in the city about the football team it's been a long time I mean like 12 13 years it's been long Ordinarily around November 1st, conversation entirely on the play and the expectations of the Bearcats not so this year and I think that's a good thing because it, it's you know, I've gone down there to sell all, all of the home games and it's just it's just been electric here on Sundays. And Cincinnati can be a great sports town. And there's you've got the Reds, you've got the Bengals, you've got great basketball in Cincinnati and Xavier, and you've got Miami and Dayton and Kentucky and Louisville and, and Indiana there, and, and Ohio State all within you know, an hour and a half. So this is a hotbed for sports entertainment. And I would mention two hockey, two minor league hockey teams. Sure, and less focus on this young and developing Bearcat team is not a bad thing either. As Ford goes to the bench for three fouls because this group has a chance to develop with, without a whole lot of attention. I don't know if Chad Moore will play any, any more here in the second half, but uh, what we've seen so far, he's given up the body for the team. Well, he, he's going to play and do the right thing, and that's what you want to see as a coach. Fundamentally, your player is doing the right thing out there, and, and he's 
he's got some, some issues with his body, but he's he's still going to go out and make the right plays. Bearcat shooting has tailed off a bit now at 51 percent. That's still an excellent number. With a post move by Kirkland leaves that a little bit short. Cincinnati has gotten an awful lot of turnovers from Clemson in this second half. They just have not been able to cash them in. They'll run back against Clemson's pressure and inside that shot is blocked out of bounds to the Bearcats. A little more than 14 minutes left in the game. Bobby right there got into no man's land going inside with the trees and they swallowed that one up and I think he knew it. He put it up in a manner where they could swat it out of bounds and they can get Cincinnati can get the ball back. Bobby trying it outside jumper and missing. By the way, one of our sponsors, Cincinnati Bell, no contract wireless. Hamilton, good move inside. He's got a little motor to him too. Nice crossover dribble out of half at, at the point to get himself into the to the interior of the defense and finish. But still, their baskets are just so difficult to come by. And Cincinnati's cooled off because they aren't getting all the layups that they were getting earlier in the day. That's a good point. In fact, the Bearcats now are under 50%. After shooting in the first half at 54, 19 for 35. Bob Huggins going to get Field Williams, who's at the table in. Probably more than likely coming in for Kirkland. He needs to get some guy in there that can make some outside shots to open it up. Because right now Clemson is just sucking inside, and preventing Cincinnati from going into the interior. All right, there's a layup drill. Bobbitt. All time of coming. Bobbitt not having a great night from the field. Only got four points. But he's still playing hard. Ted Valentine spots a foul. Huggins demonstrating to one of his guys. Tony Bobbitt just two of ten shooting, but he's not going to miss this one. And he's going to keep shooting. He's he's a shooter now. He, he'll miss a few, but it, it doesn't bother him. He's got a very, very short memory, so he'll keep putting them up. That shooters apparently do. <laughs> if you're going to call yourself one, you better have a short memory, sure. <laughs> Whole idea is the next one's going in. Cincinnati has kind of backed off with the pressure, playing more of a standard man-to-man -man defense. They got the ball inside the Hobbs. Folks around here thought that was a clean block by Robert Whaley. Not so, says Larry Rose. We got free throws. That's Whaley's third personal foul in this game. He's, he only can pay and play in four minute stretches though as you see let's see if he got the chicken wing out there to push off that looks like he got that chicken wing so they call that in the NBA but in college you can do that and get away with it and draw the foul you think they should call it uh, if it's real flavoring they'll call it in, in, in college basketball but for the most part an offensive player can get away with that move Shooting 62% from the foul line. This is not a very good shooting free throw team, Clemson. Shooting only 61% as a team. They're 5 of 10. Now 6 of 11 from the foul line. And we talked about it last game. You cannot win on the road if you don't make free throws. Got to make the free throws. Hobbs played his high school basketball in North Carolina, and Eric Hick know, Hick Hicks knows about that. He actually played against him in a tournament game. He's talking about that today in the shooter. A good pass underneath. That was a great look right there by Robinson. Juwan Robinson very quick off the dribble. He got his size. John Meeker will come in for Cincinnati. The lead is at 20 at 56 36. Clemson still showing a lot of effort out there. And not getting discouraged, which is important. Well, Clemson's now turned up the pressure on Cincinnati, giving them a little bit of their own medicine. Their 
Wildcats have switched off into their matchup zone defense. Bob Huggins not happy with the effort from his, his players here in the second half. And Cincinnati is just kind of like taking, they've taken the meter down a little bit. Huggins with a few words, more than a few words for Jamal Lucas on the bench. Clemson has stabilized its offense here in the second half, but has a lot of points to make up. 11.49 left in this basketball game. A reminder, when UC takes the court, Fox programs take a Bearcat bounce. Catch an all-new episode of the OC tonight at 11, right after the 10 o'clock news here on Fox 19. Jim Barber with Anthony Buford. We have talked on many occasions tonight about the play of number one, Chad Moore. And Mr. Moore has been Mr. Hustle tonight. The shooting has cooled off on both sides. It hasn't been a great half for Cincinnati, but haven't lost much off the lead, just two points. It's the break. A little, little less than nine minutes of play, and Cincinnati scored nine points and Clemson 11. It's just, they're just. Offensively, they were in a rhythm in the first half, and they're not getting it done here in the second half. As Bobby and Clock are have a little conversation. One way conversation. <laughs> Shot clock under five seconds. Clemson got to force it. Robinson finally realized it. I think the bench was making him aware, and he just drained that. That's about as open as they've been here in the second half. Juan Robinson had all type of career highs the other night in their overtime win. Back comes Cincinnati against the break. And Clemson, if they can get the ball, get a little closer. Lead is down to 17. Here comes Robinson on the blow by. And now Clemson within 15. This thing's starting to tighten up a little bit. And there should have been a foul right there to call it as Robinson got hammered by Meeker. And He's still able to get the basket. Cincinnati. You know, that's the one thing when you're playing. You got to continue to play at that, at that high level because if you don't, it's hard to get it back. And Cincinnati has lost the intensity. Almost to steal there, but Meeker gets it across court. Huggins really working the sidelines right now. Not in favor of what he's seen the last few minutes. This has been a 15 to four Clemson run. And I like what Clemson's bench is doing. Everybody's standing practically and supporting what they've seen in the last six minutes. Well, they're going to compete. They've cut this lead down to 15 points. And they see daylight at the end of the tunnel. If they can just keep forcing Cincinnati into turnovers and, and getting some easy baskets, which is what they've gotten over the last few minutes, they've got a shot. The lead was as much as 26. And an answer from Jason Maxfield. See Cincinnati not in the full court pressure and Clemson rushing the ball down the court to get into their offense quickly. You got to believe they're going to go inside. Hamilton's got that idea as he floats one out. Good rebound by Hobbs back up, missed it. But Hobbs will go for free throws and Hobbs said I should have had an and one there. How about the Tigers asserting themselves on the glass? Yeah, we talked about it. 9.4. Rebounds per game more than their opponents. As you can see, it's volleyball time around the rim, and Hobbs, that big strong body, able to get it, couldn't cash it in. It fell all over the glass. When I saw Clemson in person against Purdue AB a couple weeks ago, the thing I was impressed about was that a young team, hostile atmosphere there, down early and down big, but still fighting away down the stretch, and actually within nine in the closing minutes. Well, they've done the same thing here. They got down big early, and now they're they're forcing, trying to get themselves back in this game. And the pressure, the full court pressure against Cincinnati, is forcing Cincinnati to play a little tentative. The other thing that's in favor of Clemson, if they can get to the free throw line and make some, is the fact that Cincinnati is already over the foul limit with 10:08 to go. Now a steal by the Tigers. They're down 15 and suddenly making a game out of it. 
Bob Huggins going to get some more experienced players in the game. As Teddy Valentine sees a, sees a little bit the physical play by Clemson inside a little more than it should have been. Fourth foul on four. He so says it's been a nightmare for a very good interior player that we highlighted at the beginning, Sherrod Ford. He has five points, five rebounds, but four personal fouls tonight. Just hasn't been out on the floor enough to be a factor. Again, you got Cincinnati not really operating against the pressure very well. Able to beat that one. Here comes Max Seal into the lane. And a rebound to Clemson. Another opportunity to get a little closer. And that's what Clemson wants. They want Jason Max Seal trying to work in and make decisions. And that's not his game. He's a finisher. He's not a creator. No traveling was called initially on Clemson. And after the ball got kicked out of bounds, it belongs to the Tigers. Well, that's Max Seal's fifth block right there. He's only had seven blocks in four games. He's got five here tonight. His career high is seven. So he's been he's been the dog underneath the basket defensively. Whereas we thought Ford would be that guy. And you're right, Ford hasn't played much tonight because of the foul difficulties. Deep in the shot clock, Clemson needs to look for a hoop and do it quickly. Babalola forcing a long one up. They're going to run out of time. The problem for Clemson here, Anthony, two possessions with a chance to really win in this league and come up with nothing. Yeah, and, and that's important. They got the turnover that they got the force shot by Max Hill that they want. You got to convert on those opportunities when you're trying to come back. Because it's Next dead ball, more than likely, probably get a timeout if they play for a whole another minute. So you got to convert on those opportunities because Cincinnati is a little out of sync offensively. In the second half, Bearcats have managed just 11 points. Another steal. And let's see if Clemson can make some points out of this. Washington Robinson just robbed Kirkland. Kirkland tried to get himself in. And wow. how about that? Turnover, and they cash it in with a three. Got a game suddenly. It's 12 point lead for the Bearcats, and that one nearly stolen the half court. Bill Williams will try a three. He knocked it down. And that gives the Bearcats a little breathing room. But once a 26 point lead, narrowed to 12. Now Cincinnati back in his pressure. They're going to force Clemson to make quick decisions. And a quick shot. Hamilton's going to get a second chance, though. Tempo of this game has really picked up both teams. Full court pressure. Clemson more or less trying to get themselves back in the game. Cincinnati trying to get their intensity back up to where it needs to be. They just kind of went on vacation for a little while. Seems like a good problem to have how to maintain intensity when you've got a big lead. So how difficult is that? You played on a great Bearcat team where you get out on people early and being able to do 40 minutes, that's that's not easy. Well, you, you've got to set goals as a team, and, and, and you got to continue to try and pursue those goals. So when you get up, get up on the big lead, well, now you may have to, you know, adjust your goals and try and continue to do the things that you've been doing. And I think, you know, they got in a, a situation where they stopped pressing. They really did. They stopped pressing. And now they find themselves from an intensity standpoint down here compared to Clemson, and they've got to get it back. It's just it's it's you just got to keep doing what you what you done all game and don't pay attention to the score. The score now reads 62 46. We have reached the eight minute mark in the second half. As you see Cincinnati it doesn't look like all the players are on the same page. You had some playing three quarter court pressure and some all the way back. Off the steal, it's Tony Bobbitt. He has not shot the ball well from the outside, but he's got a couple of breakaways. Ford on the other end. His rough night continues. That's what the pressure does. It makes you think you've got an open look, and here comes another player rotating over to block a shot. Cincinnati now looks like they are, in, from an intensity standpoint, right back in this game. As you see, they're getting layup going right to the basket. Could use some answers here. Lead was 
shortened to 12 just moments ago. Back to 18 now. And here come the Bearcats on another break. Good defense to stop a breakaway layup. They'll make Nick Williams earn it from the free throw line. Well, what's worked for Clemson here in the second half is they've got to score to be able to put their pressure on or get to the foul line and, and, and make foul shots and get the pressure. They just can't turn it over. When they turn it over, that just starts Cincinnati off to easy baskets, and you just can't you can't give them easy baskets in this arena. In a game that we had a few weeks ago, Nick with some pretty strong numbers against Akron. Not many free throw attempts on either side tonight. Cincinnati is shooting seven for eleven. Clemson has improved after a rough start to eight and thirteen. We have a timeout. With 7.03 left in the game, the Bearcats set to go 5 0 on this very early season. They have turned up the heat tonight on the Tigers. In two seasons, the Bearcats are set to join the Big East Conference. What a great basketball league that's going to be. And with their numbers right, at this particular point, they're, they're in good company with part of the Big East. You kind of pick. Well, they've got the recipe to play in the Big East right now. With sure. Connecticut and Cincinnati, the top two field goal percentage defenders in, the, in college basketball. And you got Pittsburgh right down there, number five. So you know they defend pretty good in, in that conference. And Bob Huggins, he's always, his teams have always been up there amongst the leaders. And you see Cincinnati keeping Clemson in the 30%. In the 30s, if you will, shooting the basketball. And besides that, forcing 23 turnovers and scoring 24 points off of those turnovers tonight. And they're trapping all over the floor and just making it a circus for Clemson. And that was a hard earned basket there as Akinbala able to get inside. The points difficult to come by. Clemson's going to run away from this game and say, these guys at Conference USA, look out for them. <laughs> Field Williams got that one rejected by Fort Trot. Fort playing with four personal fouls. He's a shot blocker, among other things, and a very good one. But he has not seen much playing time today. As you see, Field Williams going to the basket, didn't get it up quite high enough, and Ford gets, gets the glove on that one, swats that one out of bounds. Can't defend that post move. Max Hill right in rhythm, got exactly what he wanted, put his man right in, his, in the position he needed to be in to shoot that turnaround jump shot. Max Hill with 16 points in this game. And on his average, 16 points and five rebounds. Hadn't been, been able to really dominate the glass, but he's still getting it done for his team. Game in tonight with a 700 point mark within range. Well, number three, Vernon Hamilton still working out his energy tonight. Robinson has got a good stroke from the outside. Got one earlier to go. That one did not. Still getting his sixth rebound. He's still got a chance with five over five minutes to go in this game to get another double double. Anthony Butler, you expected off the layoff or better for Cincinnati than what you might have expected. Well, I, it's it's I, this is about what I expected. I figured they would be able to work on some things that that they didn't have a chance to get, to work on and. And they shored up their, their pressure defense. They look a lot better in full court pressure than they had looked earlier in the season. The Bearcats have scored 21 points off the break, and they're about to add to it. They can get them in bunches, folks. And the turnovers, I mean, it is, if you like fruit, lots of apple turnovers in here served up. Bearcats. Forcing 25 turnovers and 28 points off of those turnovers. And what
wasn't it just a 12 point lead moments ago? Now it's up to 23. And safely in the possession of Cincinnati, set to go 5 and 0. Oh. with a 23-point lead and a shade under five minutes for the game with Anthony Buford. I'm Jim Barber here on Fox 19. Said all night long the Bearcats have been getting after people. Here's Nick Williams ready to finish one off. Well, the pressure right there. You, you think that guy out top is wide open. Phil Williams fills the lane, picks it off, and they're off and running. Add two more to the layup drill. You see is one of 21 teams in this country still undefeated in NCAA D1 ball. Five of those 21 in the Atlantic Coast Conference. What a surprise, huh? Cincinnati, the only team undefeated in Conference USA. Louisville and Marquette, two outstanding basketball teams. Don't let that, don't let those, you know, losses fool you. Know. Those two teams are very good. And in fact, Louisville, Lost a tough one in Indianapolis. And they beat the, Iowa. And they beat the number one team in America last week in, in Florida. Sure did. We dropped two last week. They dropped to the number one spot. Cincinnati foul on number 45. The way Cincinnati is playing with them, they've got a good, good stretch. Next, when they play Middle Tennessee on uh, Saturday, and then they've got Dayton Tuesday, and then Miami of Ohio next Saturday. They got a chance to win four games in a row and end up eight and zero. And by that time, it's it's a possibility, depending on what happens. They could they could crack the top ten because they've gone up a couple of spots to 16, having not played. And not a great deal of conversation, as we mentioned earlier, about the Bearcats, but that's because of lack of games. This is only their fifth, and we're already close to Christmas. But as Anthony alluded to, that's going to pick up nicely here in the next week. And Cincinnati is not picked to win Conference USA. Louisville is the top pick, but the Bearcats are right behind them. And they come down to those two teams. And I got to believe that's. Probably the first time, maybe the second time, Cincinnati has not been the odds on favorite to win the conference. And uh, Louisville, they, they are pretty loaded down there in Louisville, Kentucky. It's, I think it's going to be a great year in Conference USA basketball wise because Marquette's very good. DePaul is much improved. Memphis is a very good basketball team. UAB and Charlotte. And Charlotte has an outstanding victory against Syracuse earlier in the season, so they're going to be tough. And uh, it, it's going to be fun when January rolls around and conference play starts. And you know, South Florida is not picked to be one of the elite teams, but they played fairly well against Michigan State last night. Terrence Leather with a very strong game on foreign territory, and USF was able to make a commendable performance. Well, they just, John Clary, he just caught a technical foul. Caught a technical foul on Jason Maxill. So he threw an elbow as they were running down the floor. And with that also comes a personal foul on J Max. Steve Allen doesn't see much activity. But he hits both free throws. And the under four minute timeout is in effect. Cincinnati by 20. With 356 left in this game, time now for our four-game summary. It comes down to turnovers. No one better around this neck of the woods than you see enforcing them. The Cincinnati getting 25 of them from Clemson and the points off the turnovers, 28 points. That, that's just, I mean, it's tough to win when you give up that many points off, off the turnovers. They're slowly building a little fruit basket here in this game for Christmas. <laughs> Clemson is with all the turnovers. And imagine what Cincinnati is going to be like when the Bearcats get to the conference play. 
Tech and Cincinnati, they're going to continue to work on work on their pressure and and, and hone and show up that that defensive full court pressure. Cincinnati now with eight blocks in the game as we saw on the other end. Bill Williams knocks down his seventh field goal. Fields got 17. We haven't talked much about him. I don't know if you call that a quiet game for him. He's shooting the ball pretty well. Well, it's just been so much activity with layups and everything. He's just kind of, you know, just been floating along and look at the stat sheet. He's got 17. That was the ball with a little bit over three minutes left. Rob Whaley continues to play on after the knee surgery. That's a very friendly bounce for Jason Maxim, who now leads the team at 18. Shooters touch. Got 18 and seven boards. Big man does have soft hands, doesn't he? Both teams trying to wind this one down. Cincinnati. The 20 point lead. You see the tempo kind of slowing down a little bit. Both teams made a quick flurry. This is the fifth Cincinnati game of the season, and none of them have been close. Their margin of victory has been pretty strong in all five games. And it's been a product of, of, of getting turnovers and scoring, scoring off of those turnovers in, in easy baskets. Back there in the top ten in the country, scoring differential. Steve Allen with nowhere to go, finally pumps it up against Max Hill, under two minutes left in our game tonight from Fifth Third Arena. So you see the one, the one thing that that goes when you've been off and you, you lose your legs is the jump shot. And Whaley really hasn't been close to shooting the jump shot. Well, they've been teasing number 45. I came back after a couple weeks, but they were saying. One of the guys of the Bengals came back after five days. <laughs> I didn't call him Levi all week long. Yeah, Levi Jones. Yeah, Levi Jones had the surgery and comes back in five days. But I did tell all the guys that was teasing him. I said, well, now Levi's a pro now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, different expectations. Yeah, exactly. You got a little bit more incentive when you get in that check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see Tony Bobbitt in transition. Get another lay. I mean, it, it's just. It's, it's been unbelievable the, the number of layups. Cincinnati with 36 points in the paint. That's impressive. And good for Bobbin. Not having a good shooting night from the outside, recognizing that running the floor, getting easy baskets. That's what you do if your jumper is struggling a bit. That's right. You, you get yourself some easy baskets, and he's done that this evening. Fox 19 player of the game is J Max, 18.7 rebounds, now over the 700 point mark. And he ran the floor pretty nicely in the first half for a personal highlight. And he's also got five blocks in this basketball game, so he's done it all over the floor, offensively and defensively. And from the free throw line tonight, seven opportunities, five makes. Guy that Bob Huggins says never lacks for effort. Shooting touch looks a little bit better from the line now, doesn't it? Yeah, he's been solid all. Um, you know, he, he had a rough season last year. A lot of expectations on that young man to have a big year after his freshman season. And you know, everyone thought that he had a, a lackluster sophomore season, and he's come out just on fire this year. Maybe a lot. Better feeling for Jason Maxiel to know that you've got more offensive support and guys that can help out as opposed to being the guy last year with very little support. Right, teams can't load up on him now, and he's he's got some freedom to work. He's taken full advantage of it. And the post he is dangerous. Eric Hicks had that very good first half. Hold down, pulling down another rebound. He's had a solid game, 4-4 four, four from the field, eight points. Safe six rebounds, well, I thought that was his seventh rebound. And Hicks hustling, trying to keep it in bounds. Cincinnati still standing to pressure. 
And they're right at their average. They average 80 points a game. They got 79. So they've they've played a complete ball game. I'm sure, Huggins still feels like his team hasn't played 40 minutes, and I, I I don't think they have. They had that stretch where they just they just kind of fell asleep. But got to be happy after well over two weeks of being off. Got to be happy with this performance against a, a Clemson team that had come in had played some stiff competition. You knew they were going to test your ball club. Redcats had a wall in the second half here, and that allowed the Tigers to get within 12, and then quickly picked it up right after that. Kicked the lead out to 20, and stands at 23. Still got 20 points and eight boards. Pretty good night of work. Phil Williams trying to end things tonight. And in Cincinnati going five and oh in the middle of December. Cincinnati is done. They came out, I think Huggins got out of his team what he wanted to get out of him. Uh, they, they still going to continue to work. They've got a good stretch of games coming up. They played. Great pressure defense force Clemson into several turnovers, and that really was a difference in the game. Clemson just couldn't take care of the basketball. Not a great return to surroundings that are familiar for Oliver Purnell, but his team will get better. They certainly will. And, and they've, they've played a tough schedule now, and I think it's going to help them as they, they go into the ACC conference schedule. But again, really young at the point guard position. They, they've got to do better there. Well, Anthony up next on Fox 19, the 10 o'clock news with Jack Atherton.